Hey everyone, welcome to this full moon sidereal astrology forecast for the full moon on Monday, September 20th, 2021. All right, so we have a full moon in Pisces, the fish here this early part of the week, and uh, the full moon is a status check time period. So Pisces is all about getting more in touch with the watery side of ourself, fundamentally what's important to us on a soul level and what's going to lead to more of that soul fulfillment in our life. Now, this can speak to different areas. It could be dreams and ideals that could be emphasized. Um, you know, this is, of course, important to us on the soul level, which is important to, um, you know, go with the flow with and sort of pursue on that soul level. But also things like bringing more peace into our life, more rest, more sleep, perhaps. Uh, getting in touch more with our mental and spiritual health also can be very important for us, of course, on a soul level. And so great for these types of things, spirituality, imagination, right? Um, going with the flow, more presence in our life, more acceptance, more faith and trust in the divine process of things. These are great qualities to see how they've been going. We could say for the past six months of this solar cycle, but also, um, you know, this lunar cycle, these past two weeks, how has this been uh, emphasized and how can we further develop it, maybe make some shifts and changes to bring in more of that watery receptive side of ourself. Now, this is, of course, an opposition with the sun and also Mars. So they're both in more improvement and physical Virgo. So the main theme has been around the work, the service, taking care of things, day-to-day -day activities. And so this is always a good point to balance things with, is to ask ourselves, what are some things we can maybe do with personal growth or routines or good habits, good health, right? On a physical level, that healthy doing that does lead to, lead to greater spirituality and well-being. A good example, this is the monk. You know, the monk, for example, reaches those high levels of peace or enlightenment, whatever you want to call it, but it does take a tremendous amount of self-discipline, routines, habits, rituals, meditations, diets, right? It's the physical world that helps us become more embodied with the spiritual. So great to find that balance and uh, also balance between work and rest, doing and being, especially with the full moon opposite up to Mars. So yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at all this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here is the chart for the full moon. So the full moon will be on Monday, September 20th, and the exact time will be 19.04 Eastern time of the Americas. If you do wanna make that calculation for wherever you are in the world, for some of us, it will be late Monday, for others, maybe early Tuesday, but for all intents and purposes here around the Monday, Tuesday time period. And as you can see here, we are using the visible sky, uh, the actual size of the constellations, do notice that the constellations are different sizes here. So this is very different from mainstream astrology. Now it does just so happen that the full moon is in Pisces in both systems, the mainstream and this true sidereal system. But if you do notice some of the other planets are in different signs, uh, definitely check out the link down below for more information on true sidereal astrology using the visible sky. All right, so let's go ahead and start first with what a full moon is. It is the halfway point of both the solar yearly cycle as well as the lunar monthly cycle and, um, you know, doing a status check. And in this case with Pisces the fish, how is that receptive side of ourselves? So maybe thinking back to the past six months when we did have the new moon here, uh, how is this side going, right? And how can we develop it further? All right. Usually does mean a heightened energy with it. We're usually more seasoned by this time. You know, we've had this theme for six months. And so uh, we probably are generally a little bit more having faith, willing to go with the flow, a little bit more healthfully receptive. But maybe there are some things that can shift and change so that we can implement this further or we can implement it in more healthy and balanced sort of ways. So Pisces is all about doing what's important on a soul level, right? The constellation is the fish and there's two fish tied together by a string to a, to a center point. And that center point is very much key because it reminds us that we are all connected on this soul level. Uh, we all, all do have our roots in whatever your philosophy is. Pisces isn't so much about philosophy, but source or God 
or the divine or the spiritual, right? We're all connected to this. And Pisces is that great opportunity to reconnect with that soul of ours, right? With our spiritual selves. And so with this, it usually turns the energy inwards. Pisces can be deeply emotional, right? Bringing up even deep things, collective things as well. It makes us particularly sensitive to energies or emotions of the collective or others. Uh, again, to connect to that soul, or that might be the byproduct of connecting to the soul. So fundamentally doing that status check, what is soul fulfilling for us? And how can we start to maybe implement some things towards that soul fulfillment? Now, Pisces by itself isn't about necessarily taking action as much as it's about feeling. Where's the current of life going? Where's the stream going? And we're talking about our soul stream or the divine stream. And how can we align more with that? So Pisces is very much about going with the flow, doing our best to be more receptive to energy. Sometimes inaction is the best action. And uh, yeah, and doing things, you know, being more guided there. So in, you know, trusting our intuition, trusting our inner guidance, or just simply reconnecting to our spiritual self or even our unconscious self to again, align with that towards this soul desire. So great for these kinds of things, spirituality, even imagination, anything that is about an imagination, imaginative mind, um, again, bringing more peace into our life, more beingness, more presence, uh, cultivating some dreams and ideals, even though there might be some uncertainty about that, Pisces is the oceans of life. So we can, if we're trying to figure it out mentally or from the ego, we can feel lost at sea. There can be uncertainty or confusion, but again, it's all there to help us turn more inward and be guided by that soul level. But of course, and this, by the way, this is all double emphasized because this full moon will be conjunct Neptune. And uh, we could say with Neptune retrograde, it is a good time of still kind of redoing things, reflecting on things on this kind of spiritual level from again about the past six months. But as all full moons are, it is about balance. And um, in this case with Virgo, Virgo opposite Pisces reminds us that in order to reach these levels of good mental and spiritual health, right, and beingness, and uh, you know, more, to connect more of our, with our spiritual self, it does require work, healthy work, right? Not work where we're just busy and avoiding the emotions or the spiritual life, but work that is geared towards that. Again, a good example is the monk, right? The spiritual person who puts in a lot of self-discipline into those day-to-day -day routines, whether it's meditation, whether it's diets, routines, habits, right? Self-improvement. These things do lead to that balanced Pisces because with all oppositions, we do tend to go to extremes. There's a part of us that kind of pendulum swings between the two. And so one part of us may want to escape or hide away or just, you know, sleep all day or just be, right? But, um, you know, then there's this other part that wants to do, and that's the Virgo. So being busy, but we don't want to be too busy to where we're avoiding the rest and the spiritual connection. But likewise, we don't want to be, you know, escaping uh, the physical world, which would be too much Pisces. So bringing these two together, the physical and the spiritual, again, a great way of doing this is doing the, the work, right? It's the uh, things that require self-discipline, health, diet, routine that are geared towards greater spiritual health, uh, mental health, and spiritual well-being, right? And fundamentally, usually just balancing work with rest, doing with being, right? Finding that middle path there. All right, and this is going to be opposite up to Mars in Virgo, where the sun is getting closer to Mars, catching up with Mars. And so there is this balance of fire, you know, Mars and Virgo, it's doing, it's, we're, we have this energy to solve problems, fix things, find solutions to things, but it is that fire. And so we do want to balance out the fire with the water. So the way I would classify this is the active with the receptive, right? How can we pursue action, but also be receptive in the process? How can we pursue what our ego wants or our ego needs or what we think we're doing, right? We have this ego goal, these minds, these, these physical pursuits. But again, balancing that with the soul or with the spiritual or with the divine, right? So to link up our egos with our unconscious, right? It's a great opportunity to do this, to merge the two and see where the two can converge and be implemented you know, together. So taking action towards our soul guidance is great. 
Any type of action that is more present, more being, more peaceful, it's great. Any spiritual actions, right? Combining that fire and that water, I think is gonna be a major theme with this full moon. All right, so those are definitely the most important aspects, the conjunction with Neptune, the opposition up to Mars. Uh, we do have a minor sextile up to Pluto. And so Pluto and Sag, there's just an opening here for maybe transforming perspective. So I think it's great with this uh, full moon to kind of expand our minds a little bit, <clears throat> let the let the kind of uh, free spirited nature out a little bit, the adventurous side that wants to expand, see things, maybe potentials, opportunities, maybe questioning the meaning of life, maybe getting in some of these philosophies about life. And so doing that stuff in a way that feels empowering, transformative, you know, transforming our beliefs, our perspective on life, right, through philosophy or whatever it is. Uh, is a support. Uh, at least it's available. It's nothing, uh, you know, pushing us to do it with a sex dial, but it is available. And so anything that expands your mental or literal horizons could be a supportive force with this full moon. Now, it just so happens that during the full moon, we have an aspect. Mercury will be trining Jupiter. So I think our minds will be quite expansive anyways around the full moon, maybe thinking big, maybe thinking about plans, um, seeing the bigger picture. Uh, but again, with all these planets retrograde, especially between now and mid to late October, it is just still good to be flexible. We also have Mercury about to go retrograde. Mercury will go retrograde Sunday of this week, Monday of next week. And so we are gearing up for a reworking, redoing kind of time period. So reflection, inward reflection, yet soul guidance and yet action, right? Just action with flexibility. I think is great during this kind of full moon, not to mention Pisces is a mutable sign. So it is about creating more flexibility in our life. With Pisces, it's the flexibility of going with the flow. And with Virgo, it's the flexibility of building these structures like habits and routines, right? Personal development, this automates our life more and creates more flexibility. So all in all, with this um, type of energy, flexibility, I think is the goal or the key with it. All right, everyone. And so, yeah, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, already in Pisces. So it's just double adding to the energy. If we take the traditional ruler of Pisces, Jupiter, we could say that maybe some of the spiritual stuff is taking work with Jupiter and Capricorn. And so patience, discipline, perseverance. But that, again, really just goes without saying with the opposition to Virgo, which is very much about self-discipline, that same kind of earthy energy. All right, everyone. So, yeah, that's the full moon in a nutshell. Most important thing is status check around Monday. We usually feel this energy a few days before, a few days after. How is that willingness to go with the flow? Are we being guided by what's important to us on a soul level? How can we reconnect more with that soul uh, side of ourselves, with our spiritual selves, with our unconscious, merge that with the physical world and incorporate these physical things into spirituality and vice versa. Bring in more peace and receptivity into our day to day lives, uh, balancing the fire with the water, active yet receptive, joining the ego with the soul, the unconscious. It's a great way of working with this. And uh, yeah, maybe some empowerment to change perspective or expand our minds a little bit with Pluto and Sag and Mercury trying up to Jupiter. All right, so everyone have a fantastic full moon. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time for the next astrology forecast. Take care.